Hello everyone, today we are looking at one of these. Uh, more importantly, we're going to be looking at a few of these. Uh, this is a Nokia uh, MD54. Uh, that probably doesn't mean much to most of you guys because uh, this one actually is from 1983-84. Uh, uh, and I appreciate that's quite, uh, quite some time ago. Um, but there is actually quite a few different versions or variants of these. Um, most notably, the, the big differences are um, where the antenna uh, screws in. Some actually have this connector um, up here. Some of them have it uh, just on the heat sink. Um, it kind of depends um, wh which, which particular model you're looking at. Um, this particular one is out of Germany. Uh, this is for the CNET, I think. Uh, going by my records, uh, I have a few of these actually. Uh, this is just a generic Nokia one. Uh, this is what the handset looks like. Um, so the handset is KC54 and uh, this big beast of a case uh, is um, an MD54 if I remember correctly. Um, there we go, MD54CB. Now, I'll put this to one side because I have a few of these. Um, I'm going to show you a couple just um, so you guys realize the difference. This is um, one for e-tax or tax back then because this was um, from 1985. Um, this is a British Telecom one actually. Uh, you don't see many of these batched up with British Telecom. You do see a lot of generic ones uh, but this one um, has the nice British Telecom logo on it. Um, again, this is um, out of the UK and obviously this is a slightly different model because the antenna slot is right in the heat sink. Um, it, most of these actually have the same transceiver unit. It is just the, um, the battery housing that, um, that uh, how do you say, it, is slightly different. Um, these do come apart. I will take one apart in a second. I also have um, the super rare Vodafone variant of this. Now, unfortunately, the cord on this is in real bad shape um, and it's actually flaking away as we speak just here. Um, unfortunately, this was in a crate in storage um, and um, it got warm, I think, because this is just completely dried up. I mean, look at that. Uh, so, unfortunately, the, this is in, in poor shape. But this is also a tax model. Uh, this is for Rakow, which obviously was owned by, uh, which was uh, the, 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 the owners, the, the owners, Rakow basically owned Vodafone back in the day. Um, no model number on the back of this, but it's got a real nice sort of leathery earpiece here. Uh, and none of the others have that. Uh, and that's what makes this quite rare. This doesn't have um, the SIM slot at the, at the, the top. Well, it, these don't take SIM cards, these take smart cards. Um, so some of these, which one is it that takes it? This one takes a smart card and this is why um, I know this is for the CNET in Germany because the CNET had real clever, I should have really actually dug one of these smart cards out. I do actually have some. Um, they are basically uh, like SIM cards, but they also have um, a magnetic strip on, on the other side. And what it allowed you to do on in, in Germany on the CNET was actually you could take the card out of this and go to any phone box and use the magnetic strip on your SIM card to make a call in a phone box and it would just get billed to your to your cell phone bill. A really neat feature that because obviously the batteries on these didn't last very long and uh, obviously um, you know uh, service was limited to sort of you know the greater towns and cities if you know if you're looking back when they first launched the the analog service. Um, you know, um, most of you guys probably don't realize, but a uh, lot of the analog service uh, started out as, as, as car phone service. And obviously these, these portable, well, I would say portable, these aren't really portable. I mean, you can carry them, but I mean, you probably need surgery in your shoulder a year or two later. Uh, cause these, these weigh an absolute ton. Uh, we're, we're looking at, you know, four or five kilos at least. Uh, well, I don't know what that is in pounds, but uh, I think it's 2.2 pounds to the to the kilo. I mean, you do the maths. It's 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 heavy. These things weigh quite a bit. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I do actually have um, a power supply for one of these, or for for all of them, because they take the same power supply. Um, I don't actually have it to hand, so I will do an update video on these. Um, I just found these in storage, which is why they're um, they're super dusty. 
but uh, let me try and take one apart. Um, if I remember how to do it, there's a little notch just here and you unscrew that. And I think the thing just comes undone, if I remember correctly. Um, there we go, like so. And um, this would be the one for Vodafone. Got a fuse there as well. This is where the, uh, the, the charger plugged in. This is the actual battery pack. It's got the, 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 um, the battery capacity meter there and you would, you would push this button to test the, uh, the battery capacity and obviously it would show you how much battery there was left. Um, the receiver transceiver unit is this bit here. Um, I tell you what, I'm not gonna use this one because the cord is just flaking on me. Um, I'm gonna take the, um, the British Telecom one apart just because um, the cord is actually marginally better. Actually, maybe I should just take this one out. Take this one apart. Ooh. And this one is slightly different because this doesn't have the battery meter. Um, whereas this one and this one does. So this is for the CNET. Um, it's got a slightly different battery meter. You've got the test button there and you got red, amber or green for the, for the, for the amount of charge in the, um, in, in the, in the battery pack. Um, so let me see if I can undo this uh, you get a nice little thick connector for the handset like so. Uh, and this one is actually in pretty good shape. Um, Got a nice little jog wheel there for I think, not too sure what that was for, possibly the volume, although there's volume keys there, I'm not sure. A manual on and off switch, like so. No push buttons on this um, in terms of, uh, how do you say, smart push button. Uh, this was a physical switch that you had, and obviously the, um, the SIM card there. Uh, I'm not actually sure how you would get the smart card out of there. Um, that is a, a very good question to which I don't know the answer to, but there has to be some way of getting it out. I'm not gonna put a smart card in there because I don't know how to get it out, but anyway. Um, so, so this one is slightly different. I do have a few more of these, but they're all roughly the same. I only pulled out three out of storage, but I think I've got probably like six or seven of these at least. Um, and these are quite heavy as you can clearly see. Now, um, with this one, you get I think you get a I think you've got to do something with with this with this thing here. I put this down because this is real heavy. And this comes undone like so. If I can get the sucker out. Um so yeah, um this is I think this is the transceiver unit. Um this would be the transceiver unit. I think this is the battery. Yeah, so this is this will be the battery. It's got the fuse. It's got a, an 8 ampere, 250 volt fuse, believe it or not. It's got the original Nokia emblem, emblem on there. It's got the old school Nokia logo. If you guys are clued up on Nokia's, obviously that's the really old logo. Um, it's the logo that some of the some of the really early um, Nokia's had. I think the um, the City Man's all had this. This is a City Man. Um, this is a City Man 100. I did a video about all of these um, a while back. Check those out. Um, so but this has got the, the the really old um, the really old and, and notice the, uh, the the instructions are all in German. So this is definitely out of Germany. Um, slightly different um, slightly different um, battery pack to the other two. Um, but yeah, um, weighs quite a ton um, and um, certainly not something that you could carry around nowadays. Charger goes in there, five pin DIN socket, I think it is. Oh, well, that's what it's called. Um, but anyway, um, real neat phones these. I probably wouldn't carry these around just because they are that heavy. Uh, this is this is early 1980s stuff. Uh, you know, 83, 84, uh, when, when analog cell phone technology was sort of taking off. Um, there is a, a Radiocom 2000 variant of this as well. Um, it's not branded Nokia, it's branded something else. Um, for some reason, Nokia had a rebranding deal in France. Um, but, I mean, these came out in 84, 83, 84. To give you some sort of idea what else, you know, what was around 10 years later, I mean, you're looking at, you know, these sorts of things. So that the size of the phones dramatically uh, decreased in size. This is a CD-Man 100 and a, I think a 150 or 170 there. Um, you got, obviously, the... 
the the P4000, which I showed you guys a couple of weeks ago. Um, I got a PT612, which looks very similar to this as well, which I'll try and do a video about soon. And of course, you got the the, the P30s. These are classic because um, they obviously um, are recognized the world over. Um, so this is a, a P30A, first batch of these. Um, and and these are I think these are out of um, uh, these are out of America. Uh, they did do uh, NMT versions of this as well. Um, but I think this particular one is, is out of America. Uh, so this is an AMPS model. But uh, th these came out, I think, 86, 87. So only a few years after these big monsters. Uh, so if you think about it, the technology condensed quite a lot. Um, and then, you know, back in sort of 87, you, you had these. These uh, This is a, a 1320, a Mobira 1320, Mobira Cityman 1320. So uh, these came out, obviously, before the Cityman 100s. Um, so this is a Mobira variant. Obviously, I have the Nokia one as well. Um, slightly different. The uh, the emblem's a bit faded, but it is still does still say C Man 13 Twin. I don't know if you guys can just about see that. Maybe it's better if I show you the other one. This one's better. So this is yeah. I mean, I got more of these. I got I got a few of these. Um, so there's three just here. I got a few more of these. Uh, these are all the same. Uh, 1320s. Just that the two on my right are obviously Nokia ones. Um, and the, the one on my left is a, a, a Mabira one. It's strange that they obviously change the, the angle of the, the print on it, but it is the same phone. Um, uses the same battery as quite a few of the older Nokias. Um, so, I mean, to give, you, to give you some sort of idea, these came out, I think, 87. Uh, so, obviously, they condensed a lot of technology um, into a much smaller form factor. Um, and if you think 10 years later, um, in 94, everybody was already using these. This is a, a Microtac Alpha. Uh, these came out, I think, 91, 92. Check out the video I did about these with the extended battery, of course. Uh, and this is quite thick, obviously. But um, this is 10 years on from, from, from you know, the, the big sort of almost suitcase size. So um, just to give you an idea, really, of, of, of you know, what, what people had. And I do actually have all the antennas for, for all of these as well. Um, I only found one, though, uh, and unfortunately, uh, this is the one which was in this crate. So um, this, unfortunately, is quite flaky. Uh, so not in the best of condition, uh, as you can clearly see there. But... Uh, good thing is I can undo all this and show you what the antenna actually consists of so you got some sort of mesh and then you got an inner sort of thing with an inner cable so my guess is that that was obviously the earth and this was the, the positive I, I'm not an expert on on radiation out of antennas but there's a bit of wire in there so I guess that kind of works the way it does. Um, if you've not seen one of these in, in the flesh, that's what the inside of the, one of these looks like. And this is original. Um, does it say Mubaira on it? Or oh, Nokia? No, no, it doesn't actually. But this is definitely one that slots in there like so and screws in, as you can clearly see. And I can lift that. So that is a perfect fit. So um, that's all I got to say about these, really. It's just a, a short video about these phones um I, I found a whole bunch of these old school, old school nokias i know that a few people have been asking me about these and um i do if I, I said i definitely had them I, I know i do because obviously i've got them on my list um but it, it's a case of finding the the charger as well i do actually have one and i did have it um a while back but i put it back into storage because i didn't find the handsets for these so um, when I find the, uh, the charger for these, I will power these on. Uh, these are quite rare to find in, in working condition. So if you do find one of these that does still power up, um, buy it. If you find one that powers up with this, uh, you know, from the power of its own battery pack, don't buy it. Email me and I'll buy it because um, that would be uh, astonishing. These are, like I said, uh, from 1983-84. So uh, that would be, uh, so 94, that's 10 years, 2004, that's 20 years, 2014, 30. So these are over 30 years old, basically. Um, uh, so, so to find one with, with battery that holds its charge is, is virtually impossible. But um, like I said, uh, real neat phones, these um, probably would not carry one of these around because um, I'm happy carrying a Microtac. I get enough looks carrying a... Uh, uh, an MR601 as you guys the avid followers know I, I use one of them as well as my Samsung's obviously um, so but uh, certainly uh, um, 
worth worth noting if you guys haven't seen any of these older phones um, uh, these there are like I said many many different variants of these I, I think I must have seven or eight of these all different ones from from different cellular providers like I said this is for CNET in Germany uh, this is for tax because this is Vodafone this was uh, also tax out of the UK they do ones for amps like this um, but I think they're all branded Radio Shack um, I've never seen a Nokia one that's not to say there isn't any out there um, but uh, certainly uh, Nokia's were for sort of mainly Europe, European market. They did do um, uh, a rebadge of it as well, um, and I happen to have the handset. I haven't found the actual uh, transceiver bit. This is a, a VDO one. Uh, this is, well, just like the Nokia, really. In fact, it's identical to, to that. It's just branded VDO. Um, and I don't actually know what country this is from. I got a funny feeling this is from Switzerland because it's got a whole bunch of German and um, it's got some stuff which would, um, not obviously this, but I've got some notes which would hint that this would possibly be out of Switzerland, um, but uh, I don't know for sure. Uh, certainly a video doesn't mean anything to me. So if you guys know where this is from, uh, drop me a comment because I would like to know. Uh, this does take the smart card, as you can clearly see. So this is similar to the uh, to the German variant of this. Um, there are other ones as well. Like I said, um, I haven't dug them out, but um, I will try and do a follow-up video when I get the power pack sorted out and um, and fire one or two of these up just to show you guys. Uh, these are about as basic as you can get. There is no menu. It is literally just send, clear, and end. Uh, no menu in terms of, you know, press one for this, two for this, three for this. Uh, these are very, very basic indeed. So, but anyway, uh, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't hit subscribe, you guys know what to do. There is still time to win yourself one of these uh, Nokia 9300s. Check out last week's video about that. Um, a lot of people are just counting the videos and going, oh yeah, he's made X videos about, about Nokias. It's not really about that. It's actually counting all the different Nokias in, in the video itself. Uh, so, I mean... If this was a video that I would, I would be on about, I would probably say to you, okay, one, two, three, four, five. Obviously, the uh, the three here. Uh, the two city mans I showed you, though, they counted the, the P4000, the P30. You got a few here. So you'd count up all these as, as well as obviously all the other videos. So um, that's all I got to say. Like I said, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, give me a thumbs up if you like these phones. These are probably some of the older phones that I have. Um, I got a couple of, uh, of Siemens uh, briefcase phones and some really rare bespoke stuff, really early 80s stuff. But uh, certainly for mainstream phones, these are probably some of the oldest ones I have because these predate um, any sort of Motorola's like this. Any, any, any. I mean, these these all came out much later than than these here. Uh, these are sort of early 80s, 82. Some of some of them 82, 83. These are all 83, 84. Uh, certainly the briefcase ones, um, 81, 82, I think, uh, some, there's certainly the date on some of the, the, the plaques on, on the briefcases. But anyway, uh, give me a thumbs up if you like the fun of the video, and uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching.